So the Center for Sustainable Material and Innovation started from the very core concept of how we think about material. And our goal is to have a radical shift in the way we design, we engineer and eventually manufacture material to add the sustainability consideration into play. Today, when we make material, we think about the efficiency, the durability of the material, but there is no information about the sustainability figure of merit. So for example, how much energy it takes to uh, reuse the material or recycle the material and what is going to be the environmental impact. This is a very serious problem. Today we are consuming resources at an unsustainable rate and throwing too much into landfill. For example, only 20% of electronic and plastic gets recycled. It's clear we need new innovative approaches. So with this center, we want to really rethink the way we make materials and have sustainability as one of the key parameters in the way we design them. Within this center, my work consists in designing and engineering new sustainable materials, combining on the one end the two-dimensional quantum material building block, which guarantee the high performance needed for today's technology. And on the other hand, the biological building block, which naturally self-assemble and disassemble and guarantee the energy efficient recycling, reuse and the miniature engineering. I'm a biophysicist by training. And so the reason I'm involved in the center is because uh, I've been dedicated to study uh, how molecular machines work in the cell. They are capable of carrying out very, very, very sophisticated functions, and yet they come together by self-assembly, for example. And they are organized and tied together by relatively weak interactions, which means that they can actually can be brought together, but they can also actually be disassembled when the cell needs them to be disassembled. We want to develop materials where self-assembly plays a very important role. And then the second part is that these are actually soft bonds and can be disassembled and reconfigured or reused for a different application. My group, you know, we are we're chemists, we're in the chemistry department. Our interest is largely in the area of, of very, very thin crystals, atomically thin materials. And so, for example, one of the discoveries that we've made recently uh, is that by borrowing certain ideas and concepts from condensed matter physics, specifically the idea that you can take two layers of a crystal, twist them to a predefined angle, and this leads to very exotic physics at low temperatures, that that itself can be used to tune, to tailor interfacial chemistry. We are then trying to design other systems also that behave in this way and, and enhance ways. We particularly work on clean energy storage. One very important project for us, and that's uh, supported, supported by many companies and by the Department of Energy, is we work on earth-abundant cathode materials for lithium-ion. Cathode is the main component of a lithium-ion battery. It's also the most expensive component. Today is based uh, mostly on nickel-based metals, cobalt metals, for which there simply is not enough uh, in the world. So we really need to acquire and design materials that we can use with earth-abundant resources such as iron, manganese, to make energy storage so cheap and ubiquitous that when you combine it with things like wind and solar, that there's really no question anymore that that's really the best way to generate energy for everybody and for the planet. My primary area of expertise is in artificial intelligence and machine learning to think about how you have sustainable solutions for carbon capture, designing new materials for storage, but also to be able to come up with systems solutions. A lot of uh, sort of more uh, technology-based solutions, ones which look at individual technologies rather than the system, do not succeed in addressing all the issues together. So even though material science and innovations in materials may seem the most upstream, in some ways they're really the keystone for unlocking the kind of societal change that we are in the midst of. What makes the approach unique is the marriage between fundamental research, 
and the industry. And we were very fortunate to be able to partner with Enel and they understood from the beginning the need for basic research into materials. We are working with the Center for Sustainable Materials and Innovation to find new materials to power the energy transition. We want to rethink business models to make the materials we use today completely circular. We want to pursue the open innovation, helping startups, research centers, large companies to study and find solutions that limit our dependence on critical materials. Our aim is to transform researchers into real value creators, into real entrepreneurs. The long-term goals for this centre is eventually to become a centre of excellence nation, in the nation and internationally. We hope to become also a sustainability institute so that we can train the next generation of scientists, of industry leaders, of entrepreneurs, people who are formed with a mind into material research that is multidisciplinary, so across the boundary of different research and come up with solutions at the root of the problem, which is what we are trying to do with the Center for Sustainable Material and Innovation.